Okay, so we have a punch biopsy and you can see that the inflammation is limited mostly to the superficial dermal epidermal junction area. Um, on higher power, you can appreciate this eosinophilic homogenous change happening in the, in the epidermis, which is suggestive of dyskeratosis or necrosis. It actually extends down to some of the basal layer keratinocytes, but it's not homogeneously full thickness gets pretty close, but you can see that there's still plenty of viable keratinocytes along the dermal epidermal junction. Um, but there are also a lot of um, eosinophilic uh, cytoplasm cells, which makes you kind of understand that it's undergoing a necrosis here. Um, so this is the type of change that you'll see in erythema multiform. You'll appreciate the basal layer vacuolar change that's going across the epidermal dermal junction here. And in the dermis, oftentimes you'll just find a perivascular lymphohistiocytic infiltrate. You may or may not have eosinophils. I usually don't um, rely on that for a diagnosis. What I rely on mostly is a clinical information which suggests targetoid lesions and then uh, interface inflammatory pattern, mostly with basal vacuolar change um, and dyskeratosis. And there should be some spatial variation in the dyskeratosis. The farther away you get from the dusky center, the, the more viable the keratinocyte should appear. But as you get closer, um, they should all appear pretty dyskeratotic and, and necrotic. So here um, you can kind of appreciate that change, but this is going across the entire left to right specimen. So this is probably uh, sliced in such a way, bread loafed in such a way that we're looking um, more on uh, near closer to a dusky center as this piece that, that's from the same specimen is actually uh, farther away from the dusky center. And you can see that there's a lot uh, more viable keratinocytes, but you still have a good number of dyskeratotic cells here, good vacular interface change as well. So this is one example of erythema multiform. And if you go to another example, again, you see uh, interface change manifesting as basal layer vacuolar change. You see some areas of dyskeratosis and um, necrotic keratinocytes, uh, a normal basket weave stratum corneum on top of what looks to be acutely keratotic or uh, acutely um, dyskeratotic epithelial layer here. Um, and it looks different than perikeratosis. This is actually like nuclei that has, has died off and the surrounding cytoplasm is blended in. Um, and you can see that transition really nicely right here. So this is all dyskeratotic and apoptotic cells. Um, and it gets near full thickness here, but this is probably closer to the dusky center. Um, in this particular specimen, they may, they may have done more of a uh, sideways biopsy where you're looking horizontally from the outer part to the inner part. Um, so kind of try to understand the orientation that was provided to you from the uh, biopsy itself clinically. Pictures are always helpful. Um, some of these targetoid lesions, you're not going to cover the whole thing with a four millimeter punch. So it's useful to know where the biopsy was taken. Uh, this is that same example, just different sections to show you the dyskeratotic keratinocytes and apoptotic keratinocytes. And one final example, just to show you a good um, transition from the outer periphery to the more central dusky center area, which is going to correspond with more necrosis. In this uh, area, it's such a robust reaction to the right side here that this is probably a bolus erythema multiform change because um, it's actually lifting off the uh, dermis here. But if you go to the peripheral side, you'll, you'll see that the epidermis doesn't look too bad here. Um, basket weave stratum corneum, most of the keratinocytes look okay. Uh, not a lot of active apoptotic keratinocytes and dyskeratotic keratinocytes, but here you're starting to get abundant interface change. Um, and Looks like the digital image is rendering a little bit, so I'll give it a little time to sharpen up here. Um, you see that detachment right here. Um, looks like it's rendering a little bit here. Let me go ahead and close some of these other files just to see if I can speed up the rendering process. 
Okay. So yeah, I mean, basically you've got this bolus pattern, inflammatory pattern, but you can tell it's an interface uh, at the basic inflammatory pattern. It's interface, uh, destruction of that integrity of the basal layer, the basement membrane, um, scattered apoptotic cells, eosinophilic change within the cytoplasm of these cells. And um, it's lifting off. So clinically, you might detect this as a, a bulla around the dusky center. Um, so to make this diagnosis, you could consider a bullous fixed drug. You can consider a uh, robust GVHD in the proper clinical setting, but this uh, is most consistent with a erythema multiform given that spatial differentiation that you have there. So if you had to choose, I would rely on that spatial differentiation that can really help you out. Um, you don't have to see eosinophils in erythema multiform at all. Um, so I think if you were debating fixed drug um, versus EM, you, you would probably want to see more eosinophils in a fixed drug situation. Whereas with erythema multiforum, you're looking more for a robust uh, dyskeratosis um, and apoptosis, even more so than fixed drug usually. Um, and then also this, this kind of lacks uh, abundant melanophages. Now you do have melanin pigment in the, in the epidermis. That's not the same thing as melanophages. So this looks like it's affecting the person maybe for the first time because you don't have abundant pigmented histiocytes or melanophages in the dermis to suggest a recurring process such as fixed drug. Um, so just keep those things in mind when you're undergoing the process of elimination and trying to figure out the right answer. But at the end of the day, this is an interface inflammatory process is resulting in a bolus. So bolus erythema multiform should be considered as well.